Hi folks, this is Dr. Rob Sivis, the Carb Addiction Doc, but I've got something more important I want to discuss, and that is COVID, the coronavirus epidemic, pandemic that we're going through. And I want to bring logic to the discussion. This first short um, episode is on what the coronavirus is. The coronavirus is basically a little ball, a package, uh, where the wall is made of fat and protein, mostly fat with little protein molecules inserted into it. And inside of that is a short 27 to 32 kilo base strand of RNA. Think DNA in the human body, and we've got a ton of chromosomes and a ton of DNA. This is a tiny little strand. That's all the virus is. The virus is not a living organism. It is one of the primordial, earliest, earliest things that existed on Earth. But the virus requires a host to duplicate itself. And the reason why COVID is so infectious is because the type of proteins attach very readily to all cells. So when you get COVID on your body, on a mucous membrane, the protein, think of it like little barbs or hooks, uh, when you're walking through grass, sometimes you get the seeds hooking to your feet. Same kind of thing. The COVID virus hooks to your cells and it injects the strand of RNA into your cells and it uses the human body cell to duplicate itself. And you get these multiple copies coming out of COVID virus that then spread to the other cells in your body, which is fine. So it's basically using your cells to replicate. That is not the problem primarily. The problem is when your immune system sees this COVID as a foreign object, it reacts to that. So the actual infection of the COVID causes some mild symptoms. You lose your taste, you lose your smell, you can have diarrhea, you can have cramping, you can have muscle aches, you can have fever. Um, all of those things are the COVID infection and early reaction by your immune system. But then if your immune system overreacts, to that COVID. If the immune system is already engaged actively everywhere, if it's activated, we call that activation inflammation. So if there's a heightened amount of inflammation in your body already, that all these little immune soldiers are already armed and dangerous and ready to go, and they encounter COVID, they overreact. They overreact to that uh, uh, virus and it is actually the reaction of your body to the virus, the overreaction, that causes all of the damage. A little bit of mild damage is caused by the virus itself and a mild immune reaction. But when your immune soldiers are already highly activated, highly aggressive, that's where the problem lies. Think about a dog that's sleeping and you walk past the sleeping dog and he looks at you and, you, and you're fine. But then when that dog is in a heightened, agitated state and it's barking at the fence and you go into that environment, that highly ramped up dog is ready to go, ready to bite you. And that's what happens when you have pre-existing inflammation in your body that overreacts to COVID. Damages the lungs, damages the heart, and you get a severe infection. You cannot breathe. Your heart doesn't work properly. And that is what is killing people. Now, the beauty is that once your immune system has interacted at a low level with that COVID virus, the immune system produces antibodies that not only react to the whole inflammatory cascade, but now react to the presence of the proteins in that COVID virus. And therefore, should you get reinfected once you've got that high immunity, it kills that virus right away. You do not get infected. That immune surveillance doesn't allow you to get reinfected. How long that lasts, we don't know. The whole purpose of vaccinations for other diseases, uh, viruses or bacteria, is to give you that long, lifelong immunity. And we know that some immunity is lifelong. Some immune, for example, polio. Some immunity, however, needs to be repetitively uh, inoculated because sometimes that RNA or the DNA transforms itself and it becomes not quite as easily recognized by your immune system. So it has to be redone. The key thing to understand is inflammation. And in the next few segments, we're going to talk about how you can reduce 
your inflammatory response. So this is just a starter on how COVID works. Let's go through and help you to protect yourself better. A COVID virus is basically a fatty layer, just like most cells in your body, with proteins that are sticking out through that fatty layer. The protein are like little barbs that can hook in, hook into cells and attach the COVID virus and then the COVID virus goes into your cells and replicates itself, breeds inside of your cells. However, that fatty layer is critically important in how we're able to kill the COVID virus in our environment and as it comes into contact with our cells. Because that fat is very, very vulnerable to emulsification. If you have something, a substance that destroys fat, that breaks fat down, you immediately kill the COVID virus, kill in, in quotation marks, because the, the COVID virus isn't actually alive, but you destroy the virus so that it cannot replicate, uh, because then it's just a strand of DNA. And the things that emulsify fat, number one, soap, number two, alcohol, those are the two most prevalent protective mechanisms that you can possibly use once that, once that virus is on you or close to you. So the reason we wipe our surfaces and things down with alcohol sanitization or soaps is because it kills the COVID virus that lies there. Now remember, there's a lot of garbage out there about how long COVID virus lives. The virus will live a particularly long time if it is not disturbed. Because all it is, is protein, uh, this fat capsule, and some RNA. And as long as the fat capsule is intact, the RNA virus will remain alive and may reinfect you. It's only when there's decay of the shell that it is no longer able to function. And that may take days, it may take hours, it may even last for years in certain areas where it is not disturbed, where it's preserved. So it is critically important to understand that. However, if you wash with soap or you use alcohol, and it's the alcohol in the hand sanitizer that is important, you are able to kill it on surfaces and kill it on contact with you. And the whole purpose of washing your hands for 20 to 30 seconds and really getting that soap deep is that you got little crevices, little nooks and crannies in the micro microscopy of your hands where this virus will hide. But if, it, if the soap penetrates and the soap gets rid of that fatty layer, you're able to kill the coronavirus. So please, please, please wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands. Keep that soap on your hands. Same thing with alcohol. It works very effectively. Hand sanitizer works. And quite frankly, if you've got leftover whiskey that you're not using in a pinch, you can even use that. Uh, drinking it uh, may help a little, <laughs> a little bit, but probably just helps you to recognize that you don't have the virus. Um, so the point there is hand washing and sanitization with substances that emulsify fat is the critically important thing that all of us can do. Now, in the next section, I'm going to tell you about how oblivious we are to how far and how fast this virus can travel. And therefore, even if you don't think you've been exposed, clean your home, clean yourself, wash with soap and water your entire body your entire body, every nook and every cranny, wash with soap and water as often as you possibly can. Because this virus travels far longer, than, far further than anybody will let you know. In the next chapter, we're going to talk about travel of this virus. But understand, if we can emulsify that fatty layer, we protect ourselves from activation of the virus, even if we've had some contact. Please remember that. Wash, use alcohol. Hi folks, this is Dr. Rob Sivers, the Carb Addiction Doc. Today I'm giving you my thoughts, practical COVID logic, logic on how to stay safe in, in the COVID era. And I think one of the issues, everyone's talking about, oh, stay six feet away, and if you, as long as you're six feet apart, bullshit, bullshit. Don't take that risk. Here's the truth, and you don't have to be a doctor to understand this. If you've ever been outside on a cold day, and you blow, 
Look at that cloud of vapor, that steam that comes out of your lungs and out of your mouth, and look at the large ball that that forms, and look at how far that travels. It's a hell of a lot further than six feet. And it's a big ball of, of vapor. Those are vapor is water droplets that are suspended in the air. And if that virus is there, the virus particles are in those tiny droplets that look like steam. And the second thing you can do, if you still live in a cold climate, like I've got a lot of people that live in Canada, go outside in the early morning, blow out, and see what that vapor looks like. I'd love someone to send me a video of this. And then look at how long that vapor sits in the air, particularly if there's no breeze. If you're walking behind someone, even if you're six feet away, they may be breathing forward. And that's just breathing, okay? And then you walk right behind them, you're walking through that vapor cloud. You're walking through that vapor cloud full of droplets of vapor, of, of coronavirus, if they're infected. Then on top of it, they're coughing. Cough, sneeze, is an incredibly powerful force over a hundred kilometers, a hundred miles an hour coming out of your mouth and going a much, much further distance and spreading out in all directions if you cough or sneeze openly. That's why we say cover your hands, with, cover your mouth with your hands so that you limit that exposure. The reason we wear masks is not to protect ourselves from other people's virus, it's to protect you from spreading it to other people if you've got it. That's one of the main reasons. The masks are not necessarily protectors inward. The masks are protectors outward. It's only masks with filters that are really, truly, actively going to protect the wearer from incoming stuff. And that's why the N95 mask is so important for healthcare workers. Having said that, just simply understand the bubble of air that comes out of your face when you breathe, when you cough, when you sneeze. And the easiest way to understand it is do it on a cold day outside and you will understand what the truth is about how far away from other people you should stay. And then when those droplets fall down, when those droplets fall down, they stay in the sky for a long, long time. They spread even when you can't see them. So that cloud is much wider. And then on top of that, folks, if that settles on a surface, it's going to sit on that surface for a very, very long time. It may be hours, it may be days, it may even be weeks. Active virus was found on the ships that came in with infected coronavirus patients 17 days after everybody left that ship. Now, whether the virus was active or not, I don't know, but I suspect that it, some of it may have been active. Don't take those risks. Six feet and then walking behind? No. Stay the hell away from people right now. And unfortunately, it's highly likely that the whole world eventually is going to become infected. But even if you can just stay safe until we get a vaccine, then that safety is going to last even longer. But in the next few chapters, even if you do get the virus sooner than later, I'm going to give you a few things that you can do right now to prepare yourself for the virus. Obviously, protection and not getting it is the single best thing you can do. So isolate, isolate, isolate. And even when you're out there walking your dog in the morning, stay the hell away from people and their vapor clouds. I hope this helps. It's called COVID logic. Be sensible, be smart, protect yourself. God knows nobody's going to look after you like you can look after yourself.